Why am I in the boot of the Range Rover? Well, this car has quite literally taken me and my bank account hostage. And I'm now starting to think that buying this, the cheapest V8 Range Rover in the country, might have been a big mistake. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Range Rover, but unfortunately this time a pretty unhappy Joel. Let's start with some good news though. That picture you saw of that little puppy in my last video, well, he's arrived. There he is. He's a little terror. You're so cute, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, can you take him away actually, he smells. But yeah, unfortunately that's where the good news really stops. So before you all get to say, I told you so, if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. And also if you are one of my 70% of viewers that are not subscribed, make sure to do so now. And then maybe, just maybe this car won't send me into an early grave. Regretfully then, I have to report to you that my ownership experience with this Range Rover has not been the fairy tale that I was hoping for. To much of your probably pleasure from that first video where you were, well, advising me on, on the uh, terrible error I had made and potentially, you, you could be right. So let's go back in time then to that first video. I said that it was booked in uh, to a specialist on that Monday and it went to that specialist, had a full inspection, and then I got a quote back for sort of all the work that needed doing. And I, well, I almost had a heart attack. I've just had a sudden urge to go and drop some concrete off a motorway bridge. Because causing other people suffering helps me to forget about mine. Yeah, £4,741.19. pence. I'm going to need to drink a fair few more of Greta's tears to stomach that one. Joking aside though, that quote included pretty much everything you could imagine that would need replacing. Of course, replacing the air suspension, replacing a coolant leak from the radiator, replacing an engine oil leak from the rocker cover gaskets and engine oil sump, many non-air suspension components, front brake discs and pads, rear brake pads, tyres, and things like the bonnet cable and struts, and the front wipers. Of course, lots of those things are actually things I can probably do myself. I'm quite sure from doing further research now as well that this place is actually particularly expensive, but still, that's a lot of money. Oh, V8 power! I just smoked a Vauxhall Mocha. For anyone that doesn't know, a Vauxhall Mocha is, well, it's probably a eight second quarter mile car. It's proper, proper tasty bit of kit that, and uh, no problem for the Range Rover. But back to reality, the car came back to me today after 16 days in the garage, 16 days. I asked for them to do the air suspension and I think we are waiting a long time for the suspension sprut and airbag replacement to come. However, the car came back to me today and I wouldn't, I couldn't believe it. The front left is sagging. It's not the same height as the newly replaced front right, which means the entire car is slanted again, just like it was when I dropped it off. And well, I'm, I'm, I'm very annoyed actually because it's not so much that now potentially I'm gonna to have to spend uh, more money to get the other side fixed. Yes, that's annoying, but I'm actually most annoyed about the fact that it's been off the drive for 16 days. I couldn't film content with you, uh, with, with the car for you guys, which I really wanted to do. And now I suppose it's gonna to have to be taken away and, and fixed up and be off the drive for a, another amount of time. And like I say, I really am keen actually to get some equipment myself and sort of inspect the car myself, maybe do some oil change, um, some coolant fixes and stuff myself at home of course when it's in the garage getting the air suspension sorted which is i'll be honest a problem i'm not uh confident enough to tackle myself well you know i can't i can't do any of that other stuff uh that i mentioned a second ago so i'm filming this video i say i say angry just a little bit frustrated really because i genuinely love this car and although I'm weighing up in my head now, 
was this, you know, was this a big mistake actually buying this car? Should I have not been so impatient and bought something I saw on a forecourt? And should I have just held my money and spent five or six grand, like I said I was going to, and, and bought a better example? Or should I say a less shit example? But guys, look, it's early days. Like of the, what, three weeks I've owned this car now, I think this is the second time I've driven it. Because like I say, it's been off the drive for most of the time. And it's been broken whenever it's been on my drive. And <laughs> that's not changed. But like, I love it already. And I think, like I say, early days. There's nothing so far that is not solvable. So I'm holding on to that. Um, it's just annoying that the garage I've chosen, obviously, has neglected to spot something fairly obvious something I spotted the second it pulled back up on my drive and it's something that could have just been sorted by now and I wouldn't be making this video actually I would still be making this video because that bill is not excusable is it really that's disgusting oh that, you know what I like this engine it's very buttery very buttery more so than the v12 in my 7 series it's just so smooth and buttery and just the tone it makes as well is lovely this is the problem with me is that i just get way too like emotionally attached to cars like that and even though the numbers in front of me are saying no like my dog who won't listen i won't listen either <laughs> Comment down below though, guys, if you were me, would you just get rid of this car and forget the absolute nightmare that it's been so far? Or would you stick with it and, and give it another chance? I mean, I'd like to, because like I say, if I can work out how to do some of the work myself, some of the more basic stuff, I think this thing is not gonna be a big mistake, but in fact, whatever the opposite of that is, it's never gonna be the opposite of that. It's never gonna be a good idea buying a Range Rover. I think that's what I've discovered. Um, or that's what at least has been confirmed to me in the few weeks of miserable ownership that this car has given me so far. So on that note, let's just listen to this V8 once more. And literally as we do that, I've just heard a new knock. So let's end the video. <laughs> oh no. Let's end the video here um, and I'll keep you guys updated. Anyway. Next up on the channel is not this Range Rover, by the way. It's going to be the 7 Series and its first trip. I'm actually taking it to another country, which is incredible. And you're going to be seeing that video very soon. Uh, that could also, that video actually will probably be a terrible mistake and you'll see exactly why when it comes out. So wish me luck on that one. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for, for tuning into the channel. I apologise that this hasn't been like a, a progressive video. I feel like this video has really, we haven't taken a step in the right direction. We've just sort of... Well, I'm just sort of telling you what you already know, which this car is potentially going to be a terrible error financially. So I apologise it's not been a progressive video where we can actually, I can tell you how great it is and how everything's fixed and this is the best car in the world. Not yet anyway. That will come, I hope. I hope it will. So thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Glad you're loving this car as much as I'm sort of loving it, but hating it at the same time. And um, I'll see you very, very soon for the next video with the 7 Series, but then again for upcoming episodes with this bad boy. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all very, very soon.